Hi, my name is Dr. David Holtzman. I'm president and lead tutor of acemedtest.com. And today we're going to go through a high yield question in neuroanatomy. A 22 year old female diver is hospitalized with injuries after attempting a 60 foot dive. Examination reveals that she has lost a sense of fine touch in her left lower leg and has also lost a sense of pain and temperature in her right lower leg. Her left leg is also paralyzed. She has no other physiological symptoms when examined. This patient's lesion is most likely in her either cortex, thalamus, pons, medulla, or spinal cord. In order to localize the lesion, we obviously need a very good foundation in neuroanatomy. For this particular question, we need to examine sensory and motor pathways, and the clinical signs and symptoms will help us also decide where the lesion is localized. Uh, the clinical signs and symptoms show that both the dorsal column pathway, which is carrying fine touch, and the lateral spinal thalamic pathway, which carries pain and temperature, are affected in this patient. We need to draw the pathways in order to localize where this is occurring. So this schematic is something, a very simple schematic that you can draw when you're taking your exams to use for any track question. Uh, the central nervous system represented here by the spinal cord, the medulla, the midbrain, including the pons if needed, and the forebrain, which I've separated out as the thalamus on each side, and we have the cortex on each side. The dotted line represents the midline. Since we're facing the patient, right is located on this side, and we know we've lost pain and temperature from the right side, and we've lost fine touch and movement on the left. So let me draw the pathways for you so that we can identify how this is going to occur. Okay. So we'll represent pain in red and pain information as most somatosensory information coming in as sensory neurons with their cell bodies and dorsal root ganglia outside of the spinal cord and pain and temperature information makes an immediate synapse into dorsal horn, and the second neuron will cross at that level and ascend going through the brainstem and into the thalamus, where it will make a synapse in the ventral post posterior lateral nucleus of the thalamus, and then ascend to the primary somatosensory nucleus. Uh, sorry, primary somatosensory cortex. Okay, so here's our primary somatosensory cortex. Okay, and again, this is VPL of the thalamus. Let's represent our fine touch information in blue. And since we lost it on this side, we'll draw it on this side. And again, we have our sensory neuron coming in with its dorsal root ganglion cell body. And in this case, it's going to come in and immediately ascend and then make its first synapse in the dorsal column nuclei of the medulla. And it is at this point that it's going to cross over and then do the same thing make its next synapse in the VPL, and then VPL up to the somatosensory cortex on the right side, okay? So right now we have the two lesions, but we also have to account for movement, All right? So let's draw the motor track in green. And since we're talking about movement on the left, it's going to be motor neuron is going to start in the primary motor cortex of the opposite side and the axons are going to come down through the internal capsule through the brain stem and then through the decusation of the medulla so it's going to cross actually behind the dorsal column nuclei and make its way down here to then synapse with a motor neuron in the ventral horn of the spinal cord which is going to then project out to muscles of the left leg. So if we look very closely, 
What we're looking for is the place of overlap of all three pathways. And that's very obviously occurring in the spinal cord here. Okay, so if we now look at the clinic, the answer to this would be in the spinal cord based on our pathways. And we could potentially talk about lesion, more than one lesion, but that's highly unlikely. So we're always trying to find the minimum number of lesions. The fact that there were no other physiological symptoms when examined suggests that the lesion was localized to the spinal cord. If it were in multiple places, we would expect other problems as well.